Hi, how's it going? In this short video, I'm going to be showing and demonstrating to you the drawing techniques that I use to create skin textures with coloured pencils. There's one main common question that always pops up when I show my drawings to people online, and that is, how do you draw like that? Now, for me to explain how to draw a realistic portrait, it'll be a very, very lengthy process, but I do hope to do that one day soon. But for now, I think we should really start with the basics and learn about the tones and the textures first. In this video, I'll be going over the light skin textures as they're much easier to draw and the two best methods I've discovered and used in some of my most popular artworks. One of these methods is a quick, short one that will require a blending stump. And the other is a slightly lengthy process and you will require some patience. But believe me, the results are so well worth it when you take a step back look at your drawing that you have used both of these methods on. Uh, now one other thing uh, is that I have recently really been wanting to compare how oil-based pencils compete against wax-based pencils. I've always found oil-based pencils to be in my favour more, so I do prefer the layering and the blending methods uh, used to get such a great result that I'm satisfied with. For this comparison, I'll be using polychromous pencils, which are the oil-based ones, and Zonar, which is spelled with two Zs, uh, pencils for the wax-based ones. These pencils will be seen as the cheap ones for the video, which will be the top ones, as I bought them a really, really long time ago. Back when I first started drawing, and I actually didn't know how much art supplies meant to cost, so I just got my hands on the cheapest ones I possibly could off of Amazon. Uh, but I've never really used them to create anything as I very quickly got my hands on some polychromous ones and I got used to using them and I loved how they played out for me. So I'm hoping to show you exactly the comparison, how I use it and uh, the techniques I use to create the skin textures. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so going straight into how to draw this with uh, coloured pencils. For this one, with the expensive pencils, as I explained earlier, we're using polychromous ones. Now, with uh, the way we start is just with a simple, ordinary, what you'd see as your skin tone colour, very light skin tone colour. Uh, it's like a very lightish pink, and I'm using a pencil extender here because I've got a little short after too much use. And the first thing you'd want to do is just, as you can see, is uh, just scrape over it, not scrape over it, draw over it. Um, <clears throat> as, as you can see, I'm just doing it all in a diagonal pattern, and then I'm going over it uh, as a horizontal and then vertical, and that way it just really gets to fill up the entire space. Now, after you've done about one layer of that, you want to use your blending stump, which here I'm just scraping on a sheet of paper. And usually I'd use this on a separate sheet, but in order for demonstration, I'm just doing it to the left side. Now, the reason I do this is because I find it allows the tip of that blending stump to give a very nice, rough, uh, sort of poofy end. And that poofy end allows it to be, um, allows you to push around the pencil marks a lot, lot more. And when you do this, you'll find sometimes it will take it off, but it's just pushing it in. So just go around in it in very small circles, as you can see, I'm speeding it up. Um, and it just it just pushes all of the pencil marks into those little tooth gaps within your sheet of paper. Now, if you're using just ordinary cartridge paper, this method won't really work for you because those sort of just an ordinary printing sheet of paper doesn't have any tooth to it so it, you won't be able to push around the pencil marks as much or at all um, and then after you've done about one layer of that you want to use the same pencil going over it again but in a different direction that way you allow it to give it a much better look feel and sort of just a general likeness and <clears throat> doing that it just works a lot better, and you want to do about one layer of that. And I'm just going um, vertical and horizontal around the sides to just fill it in a little easier. And the more layers you do of this, the, the thicker, the better, and the more textured it will become. You can do as many layers as you like, but I find that eventually, using the blending stump, it really sorts, it, it sort of gets, it sort of pulls out after a while and pulls out the the pencil marks and it just ends up looking really really dull and flat so i do i do suggest that you just use this method maybe six six layers maximum i'd say for this um and then once you've done maybe two layers of your base color which is your standard stock skin tone color that i've used you see i'm just going in there with a slightly darker pink and then just trying to get a little more of that ordinary skin tone textured color that you see and 
I'm gonna do that in, as, as you saw earlier, the different directions and everything. Now, I do find that polychromous pencils are definitely my preferred ones, as I just find oil pencils just stick a lot nicer and they just feel a lot higher quality. So then after you've done that layer, you wanna go over with the blending stump again. And then as you can see exactly there, I'm just going over it with that with that different pencil again, but in a different direction. This, I don't, it just, it just allows the tooth to pick up in different spots and areas because you can see in that how there's all these little white stumps and bits and bobs. That's the tooth of the paper. Now, I wouldn't really suggest using a really, a really sharp tooth for it because that will just, it just becomes really difficult and when I mean sharp tooth I mean like using watercolored pressed paper that sort of paper it just doesn't quite work as nice but then at the same point you don't want to use one that doesn't have any tooth to it because you'll find you can't push it around into those teeth as well and it, it just ends up looking an absolute nightmare so as you saw just do that layer again and then we're using the blending stump now the reason I'm pushing the blending stump around at the very tip with my thumb is, as I said, you want a very poofy end at the end of it, a very fluffy sort of end. Because if it's too flat, then you'll find you're just picking up the pencil marks and the pencil marks actually coming off of the paper. And it's just an absolute nightmare if that happens. And it, it ends up looking really, really crap. So then, as you can see, with this section, I want to try and get a lot more... Uh, detail into the into the skin tones and textures so I'm using a much lighter pink now this isn't a pink pink it's it's still found within those skin tone ranges but it is very it is a lot uh, darker pink lighter pink it is just pink it's not light pink dark pink skin pink it's just pink and then what I'm doing with that is I'm just going into each of those little white crooked areas that are quite large and just filling in those ones that allows your skin texture to if you were to hold up your hand to your to, uh, and you look at your hand you'll see your hand has some pink and brown textures and tones in it and that is why here i'm using that brown pencil um, that's still found within that tray of pencils for the skin tones and I'm just creating just tiny little dots and filling in those white marks again but that, are, that are not the same points that I filled in with the pink marks because it just otherwise it doesn't quite look that good but um yeah so you fill in all of those areas with that pencil and then what I like to do is rather than going over it with a blending stump immediately after that is just use that basic stock pencil you want to stock up on a few of these ones because you'll find you use them a lot as your base color and your secondary color and all that sort of thing and you just go over them uh, once or twice with that <clears throat> and then if you go over slightly very 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 lightly with your darker pink skin tone and then as I'm using a white pencil I'm not going over the entire area with that white pencil but I just fill in those areas in those second areas now here for this one I'm using that zone art pencil the wax based pencil that I suggested and we're gonna do the fast method again with the cheap pencil now <clears throat> sorry I found that I really really didn't like these pencils at all um, the, the the bit just wore down so quickly so I sped up this one so much faster and I'm using the exact same method but I wanted to, to do the comparison for oil based pencils and wax based pencils and you can see immediately it's just got this yellow tint to it that it just looks absolutely crap and I don't like it so I decided not to do the slow method for the cheap pencils because I found it would be a waste of time and resources and just it was just crap I'm I really don't like the oil based the wax based pencils I think if you're going to do a cartoon drawing you do the wax based pencils but for realism you definitely want to use oil based pencils and for here we're doing the slow method this is personally my favorite method of drawing skin tones textures um, now it does take quite a bit of time so I've sped up this one quite a bit but we go in the smallest little circles you can imagine and we're just going over that filling up that block and then we're using that uh, secondary base color which is that slightly darker skin tone pink skin tone I don't quite know what to call it and I've worn down the pencil so much I don't even know what it's called anymore um, and then so after that base color we're using that first one as that base color this one is that pencil we're using now is our secondary color and <laughs> our secondary base color and 
after we fill in our base color, we're going over again with that secondary base color as small circles again, just all the way around. And <clears throat> what that's doing is that it's actually filling in those those little white tooth areas for us. Yeah, and it does take quite a bit of time uh, in comparison to using a blending stump. Now the alternative to, to using that blending stump is using this white pencil. Now using the white pencil, you don't want to use these massive huge marks and and uh, just instantly rubbing over the entire thing because it, it will create this really odd looking strange lines and it just, it will make your drawing look really bad I've discovered. So if you just go again in these tiny little circular motions, circular, what, what yeah, circular motions, and um, that will then fill in and, and push your pencil marks into those, uh, into those white cracks and crevices for you. And then after that one, the exact same as we did for the other one, uh, for, the for the faster method, is we're just using a, a lighter pink, and I only really use a few basic pencils for, for whenever I'm creating skin tones, unless I'm drawing an eye or an eyebrow, you, you're using different colors. But for your basic skin tone, you're just using uh, a few selected pencils. And as you can see with this one, <clears throat> we're not doing any lines, it's those little circular motions, very small circular motions. Because for the slower method, I find when I'm creating the when I'm using the slower method, it really, really allows me to go more in depth with how the skin will look. And it always creates this, this rougher, more rigid, rugged sort of looking, looking and feel, which I often use mostly for the cheeks and the faster method I use more for the forebrow and uh, yeah, for your forebrow and everything. And that really just, it speeds up the process of drawing so much, but when you're using, when you're drawing like a chin or your cheeks or your nose, you definitely want to use the slow method. Um, but there's another thing, there's another way you can combine the two together, but if it goes wrong, it will make your nose and your eyes and it will just make everything look really dull and flat. But hopefully in another video, I can show you exactly how to combine these two methods together in, there's a certain order that you have to do it in, uh, in order for it to look nice and look good and really just have that wow factor. Now, as you can see, the, the, the only real thing for the slow method is it's just a whole load of layerings and going into each and every single one of those cracks and crevices that the tooth has created from the paper for us and just filling those in manually with a pencil, different pencil grades, not pencil grades, different pencil colors, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I, yeah. And um, yeah, that that's really all there is to the slow method and the fast method but it, it, it is just filling in those white dots that the tooth has created with a different pencil color and you can choose the different pencil colors but if you bought a box of uh, polychromos pencils with the 120 in them then I think it's in the first or second row of pencils you'll see that all of those on the left hand side are all your eye will just identify them as your casual skin tone but you, this is where if you just put down one of those pencils it, it won't look very good if you put down two of those pencils just layering them still you'll find you, you'll come out with a better result but it still won't look amazing you know you won't get people going wow factor that sort of thing and that's where layering in realism drawings is one of the most important things in in drawing realism. If you're painting realism, uh, yeah, you can do it wet on wet painting, and that's, that's a whole different story for realism paintings, but I do, I'm a lot better at trying to create realism drawings, and I'm not amazing at painting, so I'm not gonna go into that at all very much. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it, it does take a lot more time and effort, and that's where for this method, all you really need is just some patience, and so if, if you practice this method <clears throat> just 
like this, get four squares, try out how you do the fast method, the slow method. You can try combining the two together and see if you can work out that, but I do hope to do a video on that at some point soon. But with the fast method, at the, at the very end of it, you can just keep going into it with your details and trying to create more details. With the slow method, it is just that, it is just layers, 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 but you don't want to use your blending stump for that because it will push around it and it just, it comes out with this weird looking sort of feel and everything. But definitely give both of them a try, see which one you prefer, use your different pencils and uh, yeah, tell me what result you come out with. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, like and subscribe. Thank you.